Apollo 9, which will be the flight that goes in uh, late February, early March, after the blast off, uh, the launch tower uh, escapes. And then as they get out into space, this third stage puts them into the uh, lunar trajectory, uh, which is uh, as on Apollo 8 flight. It will not actually be a lunar trajectory this time. This uh, will be so uh, phased and will be fired in such a way that they'll go into a high uh, Earth trajectory, high Earth orbit. And while circling in that high Earth orbit, they will then go through the maneuvers that will take place at about that same point in space when the next flight, Apollo 10, goes all the way to the moon. And what happens in that case, the service module and its command module separate. Then the fairing drops off. Actually, it opens in a set of four sort of butterfly panels, which are not shown here. And the lunar excursion module is then revealed. The spacecraft is turned around in this sort of maneuver. And if you'll remember, Apollo 8 tested that maneuver, although there was no spacecraft here. Both Apollo 7 and 8 tested it. They did turn around and come in and take a look at the opening where the lunar module will be on Apollo 9. They come in and they pick up the lunar module in approximately this fashion. Can't seem to hook on there. We're hooked on and pulls it loose. Now, I don't have enough hands, and the spacecraft works a lot better than I do, but of course it's computerized, and pulls the LEM out like this, the lunar module out. The stage 4B, S4B, which is the third stage, goes on into around the moon, perhaps, and uh, on out to a solar orbit. And then this is in flight out to the moon. On the Apollo 9 flight, this much will go in the high Earth orbit. On the moon flight, they will go on out to the moon, of course. In the Apollo 9 flight in Earth orbit, as they're coming around uh, the Earth, they will then fly this thing out, and they will, two men in the command module, crawl through this little docking collar down into the LEM. They separate again like this, and while the command module station keeps, this drops down in the Earth orbit and just tests its flight characteristics that it can fly well, go down and come back up again. It's got plenty of propulsive power that everything works well. If it does not in this test, the command module can maneuver around and rescue it, but it is expected to come back to the proper attitude, and this is the way it would come off the moon. It, well, not, not quite. Let me show you that in just a moment. They reconnect then, and the two astronauts pass into the command module and then come back to Earth. Now, on the moon flight, will work this way. They get to the moon, they separate, this lands on the moon, on the surface of the moon, in thus fashion, and the spreads out the legs, sits on the moon, and after the two astronauts have climbed down, explored the moon's surface, gone back into the LEM, the bottom of the LEM becomes its launch platform, and this much, the Swimmers are now moving their oxygen bottles, and the swimmers are in the life raft taking off their gear. That means that the uh, dangerous part of, of the operation, as far as they're concerned, is over. You were talking about how close the uh, space capsule came down to the aircraft carrier, Dallas. Over the past several days, everyone has been speculating uh, about the dangers involved in this return. Uh, men have never come back this fast from space, 25,000 miles an hour, and have never come back from so far away. And coming back at that speed, there was the danger that when the spaceship hit the atmosphere, the, the outer edge of the atmosphere at 400,000 feet or 67 miles, if it hit too sharply, it might burn up like a shooting star, or if it hit at too shallow an angle, it could uh, spin off like a, like a rock uh, across a pond. But uh, none of those things happened. And uh, the space capsule came down after the flight around the moon and back and landed uh, within a couple of thousand yards of what it was aiming for. We have word now that the uh, astronauts are inquiring about the swimmers working on the hatch. And the swimmers uh, are now, uh, I suppose, that means that they're in contact with the, uh, with the astronauts. We heard a few moments ago that they had not. And we have word now the hatch is open. The hatch is open. Any moment now, the astronauts should begin to get out. Recovery 3, as we suspected, is uh, making the recovery. 
Now the recovery three. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm reading notes just the way you are, Ron. Uh, the recovery three uh, is the is the lead swimmer. Yes, well, that, that should be uh, Lieutenant J.G. Richard Flanagan, as we suspected a moment ago. He's the commanding officer of the uh, underwater demolition team detachment on board, UDT-12. And uh, he and his uh, highly trained men have jumped into the ocean, and they are taking care of these final, uh, these final essential moments in the recovery of the Apollo 8 astronauts. One of the things waiting for the astronauts on the ship is a really enormous cake. Seven feet long and three feet wide and 14 layers high, which the cooks have been working on for some time. It's actually about 57 small cakes uh, plastered together with vanilla icing. First astronaut is getting out of his uh, capsule now. Do we have the name of who's getting out first? He's uh, whoever he is, he's standing in the uh, standing on the side actually uh, standing on the uh, on top of the flotation collar one astronaut is out through the hatch standing on the side of that the word now that the, the second astronaut is coming out second astronaut coming out of the hatch he probably will also be standing on the flotation collar the uh, first one probably is in the raft by this time I wonder if the captain leaves the ship first or last. <laughs> well, when, the, when there's no danger of the ship sinking, I suppose there's nothing wrong with the captain leaving first. Third one, third one is, third one is standing in the hatch, coming out of the hatch. We're giving you practically a blow-by-blow -blow description, uh, which we're getting uh, by means of uh, scribbled notes coming to us from flag operation. All of them are on the uh, flotation collar, all three of the astronauts, Borman, Lovell, and Anders. Any moment now, they'll be climbing from the flotation collar into the uh, spacecraft. The carrier is now beginning to come around. The carrier is making a left turn. Astronauts will be coming aboard shortly. You probably heard that on the loudspeaker system. Astronauts will be coming aboard shortly. A lot of the sailors here are dressed in their uh, flight deck gear, red, blue, green uh, shirts designating the various functions which they perform. A uh, good many of them wearing their Mickey Mouse hats and uh, the headsets with which they maintain contact with flight operations. Most of the sailors, however, are in, are in uh, dress whites. And we have word now, the swimmers and the astronauts. First came Lovell, then came Borman, and Anders third. So the captain got out in the middle. In the middle, yes. Well, that's a safe place to get out. And the sky is very bright now. Uh, it's, it's a lovely morning, uh, partly cloudy, but really uh, beautiful out here in the middle of the Pacific. Uh, the sky uh, tinged with yellow and pink, and beyond it, the uh, very light blue of the early morning. The sun isn't up yet, but probably will be quite shortly. One of the uh, frogmen has now closed the hatch again. It'll be some uh, time before the uh, aircraft carrier can maneuver up alongside the capsule and lift it on. And the, uh, the Navy officials and space officials don't want anything to happen to it, so they've closed the hatch to keep the water out. The swimmers will stay with the capsule while the astronauts are lifted into the helicopter and flown to the deck. You probably noticed, Ron, that the uh, carrier has been heeling to starboard as she turns left. That's something that uh, surprises a lot of people who come on board. The carrier, once in a while, on the loudspeaker system will say, stand by for a heel to starboard, whereupon the carrier makes a left turn. But it's uh, quite logical when you stop to think about it. You know, I can't, I really can't get over my uh, sense of amazement and wonder that this immensely complicated operation planned so long ago and worked out in great detail uh, a year and a half ago has been completed just about exactly the way its planners expected and hoped. Uh, it certainly is a, a tremendous tribute to uh, American technology and American planning. Carrier still turning left, coming into the correct position for the helicopter to come on board. Probably the same time the recovery helicopter comes on, uh, the photo helicopter will also uh, be putting down on the flight deck, but farther forward. 
The photo helicopter, of course, has been taking close-up pictures of the recovery scene, and these will no doubt appear uh, in the next uh, few days once the carrier gets back within uh, air flight of land. Anders is now in the second life raft. All three are now in the second life raft, and they are free of the spacecraft.